Approximately 4,500 years ago, a group of terrestrial mammal hunters spread eastward from Beringia to Greenland. There, they established small settlements along the Alaskan and Canadian coasts. Known collectively as the Paleo-Eskimos, these people inhabited the northern Arctic coast for the next 3,000 years, developing regional cultural variants in Canada and Greenland. Then, around 750 to 800 years ago, a new cultural tradition focused on whale hunting, the Neo-Eskimo Thule, quickly expanded eastward through Paleo-Eskimo territories, reaching Greenland in just a few centuries. These Neo-Eskimos were the inhabitants encountered during European contact and became the Alaskan Inupiat, Canadian and Greenlandic Inuit and Siberian Eskimo as we know them today. For several decades, anthropologists have employed biological approaches to investigate the origins of the different ethno-linguistic groups in the Arctic. Early studies used classical genetic markers which showed that these northern groups were distinct from more southern Native American populations and pointed to a complex population history for the North American Arctic as a whole. However, conclusions from these studies were based on low-resolution data and were less refined than what is now possible with contemporary molecular genetics. More recent genetic research focusing on sequencing data from ancient and contemporary Eskimo or Inuit genomes provides a much more detailed and nuanced understanding of the historical events that have shaped the genetic diversity of these populations. Recent molecular evidence on the origins of the indigenous inhabitants of the Americas suggests descent from an isolated Beringian population with several early migrations into North and South America beginning sometime after the Pacific coast became navigable around 17,000 years ago. Detailed genetic analysis of individuals from Greenland, Siberia, the Aleutians, and the Americas has revealed that Eskimo Alut and likely Nardine speaking populations have ancestry from later migrations, separate from the first people who settled in the Americas. Recent research on Arctic genetic diversity has primarily focused on mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA, especially the hypervariable region, HVR, of the non-coding D-loop. Mitochondrial DNA is inherited maternally and does not recombine, making it a single genetic marker. The HVR evolves at a pace suitable for studying recent history. North American Arctic populations carry specific mitochondrial haplogroups A2A, A2B, D2A, and D4B1A, which are less diverse compared to other Native American groups. These haplogroups likely originated from a Holocene expansion out of Beringia, with some returning westward to Siberia. Later admixture and population movements, particularly during Russian colonization, further shaped the genetic makeup of circumarctic populations. Despite the fact that the Alaskan North Slope is essential for fuller characterization of Inuit genetic prehistory, this geographic region has not previously been sampled. Genetic testing of Inupiat people living in Alaska's North Slope is helping scientists answer questions about migration patterns and the ancestry of the populations that inhabited the North American Arctic over the past 5,000 years. The study provides the first genetic evidence that connects all Inupiat and Inuit populations from Alaska, Canada, and Greenland back to the Alaskan North Slope. In this study, mitochondrial DNA haplogroups previously identified in ancient Neo and Paleo Eskimo remains, as well as in living Inuit populations from across the North American Arctic, were also found in the people living in North Slope villages. These findings support the archaeological model that the peopling of the Eastern Arctic began in the North Slope, 
with an eastward migration from Alaska to Greenland. Additionally, the study provides new evidence supporting the hypothesis of two major eastward migrations from the North Slope at different points in history. There has never been a clear biological link in the DNA of Paleo-Eskimos, the first people to migrate from Alaska into the Eastern Arctic, and Neo-Eskimos, a more technologically advanced group that later rapidly spread from Alaska and the Bering Strait region to Greenland, seemingly replacing the Paleo-Eskimos. These results support the hypothesis that the Alaskan North Slope served as the origin for the eastward migrations of both Paleo-Eskimo and Neo-Eskimo populations across the North American Arctic. The genetic diversity and population structure analyses indicate high levels of gene flow and little differentiation between North Slope communities except between Barrow and Anaktuvuk Pass. The North Slope Inupiat were significantly differentiated from Greenlandic Inuit, Canadian Inuit, and Aleut populations. The coalescence date estimates for the major haplogroups in the North Slope predate the Paleo-Eskimo migration, suggesting they arose in a population ancestral to both Paleo and Neo-Eskimos. The genetic diversity was probably made easier by the relatively faster travel along coastlines, using boats in the summer and dog sleds on coastal ice in the winter compared to inland routes. Additionally, umiaks and kayaks could carry large groups of people. It's important to note that the oldest mitochondrial lineages like A2A and A2B were found more often and were more widespread across the North Slope compared to newer, more recently evolved lineages. For this research, scientists sequenced and analyzed only mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down from mother to child with minimal changes across generations. They discovered that 98% of the maternal lineages in this group were of Arctic descent, with all known Arctic-specific haplogroups present in the North Slope communities. Haplogroup D2 is known to be associated with ancient Paleo-Eskimos, and prior to this study had only been found in the remains of these early Arctic inhabitants. D4B1A is a genetic haplogroup associated with the Neo-Eskimos, a more advanced culture that followed the Paleo-Eskimos and quickly expanded throughout the Arctic, likely taking their place. The distribution of ancient and modern Arctic mitochondrial haplogroups varies by region, Neo-Eskimos living in Canada and Greenland have high frequencies of haplogroups A2A and A2B, lower frequencies of D4B1A and the A2 root haplotype, and show no presence of D2A. Another haplogroup identified in the study was C4, typically found in Native Americans further south. Its appearance in the North Slope suggests it may have been brought by the earliest peoples to enter the Americas. Researchers believe it could be present in the region due to recent marriages between Athabascan and Inupiat families, or possibly as a remnant of ancient contact between these groups. Another surprising finding in this study was evidence suggesting that there may have been some migrations of Greenlandic Inuit back to the Alaska North Slope. The researchers plan to investigate this further using additional genetic markers. While this study uncovered exciting new evidence about the history and prehistory of Inupiat women, it also supports local knowledge about the strong ties between North Slope villages. Scientists discovered many shared maternal lineages between coastal communities, indicating that women frequently moved between villages. In fact, when they compared the genetic makeup of all the North Slope communities, they found them to be so closely related that they could be considered a single population, something that aligns with what elders and community members have long said about Inupiat history. Although haplogroup D2A 
a lineage associated with Paleo-Eskimos, is present in modern North Slope Inupiat, the study suggests a broader genetic discontinuity between Paleo and Neo-Eskimos. This indicates that while Neo-Eskimos are the primary ancestors of modern inhabitants of the eastern North American Arctic, the Paleo-Eskimos likely did not contribute significantly to the genetic makeup of these populations. The study also found a loss of diversity as migrations continued eastward due to successive founder effects. It found minimal matrilineal admixture from non-indigenous populations, only 2%, but acknowledged that European contact, particularly through the Spanish flu pandemic, had profound effects on population structure elsewhere in Alaska. The Thule migration was once primarily viewed as a population replacement event. However, more recent studies have identified evidence of limited admixture between Paleo-Eskimos and Neo-Eskimos in regions like Greenland and within the Cyrenique Eskimo gene pools. This suggests that the migration involved more than just a simple replacement of populations, indicating that the replacement hypothesis requires further testing, particularly in other regions of the North American Arctic. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.